What's up, everyone? Today, I want to talk about a quick stop motion trick that can make some of your shots a lot easier to capture. Here, I've got what I'm considering the final shot, and you can see I've got two characters here, Mirage and Sideswipe, kind of shooting into the air in the middle of a battle. And the shot starts with Mirage here on the left, transforming into robot mode, pulling out his gun. Meanwhile, Sideswipe is just kind of shooting into the air at some unseen enemies, you know, like this guy who's flying by right here. And if you've seen my tutorial series up until this point, there should be nothing here besides how to actually do the gun effects, which I'm not going to cover here. I'll cover that in a future video. But there should be nothing here that you don't already know how to do. The camera motion that you're seeing is something I explained in the past tutorial. There's not actually camera motion. That's something I'm adding in After Effects. I've also time remapped my shot already, so the motion is smoothed out exactly how I want it by time remapping. So as I always say, there's not a exact frame rate. People always ask what my exact frame rate is, but it just kind of varies depending on how I've time remapped the shot. So yeah, there should be nothing here that you don't know how to do, but let me show you how this shot originally looked. Here I've got my footage. I've already time remapped it, as I just said, to smooth out the motion. But if I play it, you'll notice that I animated Sideswipe here on the right by himself before I ever touched Mirage here on the left. And the reason for that is that if you're trying to animate multiple characters or multiple things happening at once, it's really hard to keep track of what you want to do from shot to shot. So even if I'm just animating one character transforming, it's sometimes challenging for me to remember, like... You know, I've got to touch the wheel, I'm going to touch their leg, and then I'm going to touch the arm, and then I'm going to touch the hand coming out of the arm. And, you know, it's hard to do that every single shot. You kind of lose track of what you've moved if you're not paying super close attention. So it can be challenging enough to animate one character, but it can be really challenging to animate two, right? So, like, I would have to be remembering what side swipe was in the middle of doing, so was his gun moving up or down, I would have to remember all that in addition to everything Mirage is doing. But because of the way I composed this shot, I could film them at different times, or animate them rather, at different times, and just combine the footage very easily with a simple split screen. So let me show you how to actually do the split screen. I'm going to take this composition, which is called DSC, over here, and I'm going to drag it into a new composition. Ignore these other ones, that's the work I've already done. And with this new composition, I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate this layer, so Control or Command plus D. And what I'm going to do to this top layer is create a mask. So I'm going to turn off the bottom layer just so you can clearly see what's happening. And with the top layer selected, I'm going to create a mask that looks something like this. Boom. If you're not familiar with a, what a mask is, I recommend you watch some other After Effects tutorials on masks. But basically, all I did was cut out a part of the video, and that's the only part of the video that's going to be seen. And if I had anything under this, I could grab any random image, right? And let me just scale this up. And you would see it everywhere that the mask um, is subtracting, right? So the mask is just keeping this part of the video and everything else in the frame you will see what is below the mask layer. So, let me just delete that and turn this layer back on. That does exactly what we want it to do, right? It shows Mirage in the other half of the shot here. So if I just take this piece of footage and I drag it, then I can play this really quickly and you'll see that we've already kind of got what we were looking for, right? We've got the two things happening at once. Now let me show you a quick tip. In my original composition, I added a marker here so that I could see exactly when um, when I stopped animating Sideswipe and when I started animating Virage here on the left. And you can see that visually I like to take a picture with my hand in the way just to make it really easy to find that point while I'm scrubbing through. And by adding a marker there, you can see in the other composition, you can actually still see that marker. So as I drag this footage to line it up to the point I need, I can very quickly see where that point is. Now, as you watch this, you might notice something, and that is that the, the mask is really visible. 
especially right here at the bottom of the table that they're standing on. You can clearly see, you know, the footage shaking because of the mask that we made. And that is because I used a flimsy tripod. I wasn't very careful when pressing down on the camera. So every time I pressed down on the camera, I moved it a little bit. It was also on carpet, which is not optimal. So every picture I took kind of shifted the camera a little bit, right? So because of that, the shots are not lining up perfectly. So first off, I would of course advise you to make your actual tripod and camera as sturdy as possible. But if you've got something like this going on, you can still make it work. And the way you do it is, I'm just going to quickly delete the mask and go back to the original footage, is you want to use something called stabilized motion. So if you've got your tracker window open, you can see stabilized motion right here. If you don't see your tracker window, just go to window tracker. But with your layer selected, you can go to stabilized motion and it will ask you to select a point. So this is the point that you want to stabilize. You know, you wanna grab a point that looks fairly unique. So you wouldn't wanna grab just a spot on this table because it might get confused and think that this over here is the exact same as this. I like to grab something like this, like a corner or maybe a unique set of pixels. So this green light over here is pretty unique. And once you've selected your tracking point, you just press analyze forward and it will slowly scrub through and analyze the motion of your camera. Now this is really useful if you have kind of a handheld camera and you want it to look more stable, but it will work here for stop motion as well. The bigger your pictures are and the higher resolution they are, the longer it will take to stabilize this motion. So I'm gonna stop mine because it's gonna take a while and I've already done it in another composition, which is over here. But once you've stabilized it, then you can make that mask and then it will look a lot better. So even here, if you pay really close attention, you can still see it kind of shifting around. But once you add, you know, your visual effects, if you've got any, and once you add the kind of camera motion that I like to do that I explained in a previous tutorial, it becomes a lot harder to see. And hopefully it's not something you saw when I first played the shot. So this is just a quick look at what my mask looked like. You can see the lines here denoting the mask. So this piece of footage right here, this DSC layer number 31 on top, is the footage of Mirage right there. And then the footage on the bottom is the footage of Sideswipe on the right. And so yeah, that's just the way, that's the way I combine them. You can play around with where your cuts are because if you have some shaky camera or some overlapping shadows, it might be easier to hide your cuts in different places. So the reason why I drew my mask along this table right here was because it's a lot harder to see the cut in the darkness of this table than it is to see on the edge of the table, right? So if that edge was shifting around, then you could tell that there was something going on because you know the table should have a straight edge. But you can't really see the blackness of this edge shifting up and down or left and right. So that's why I strategically placed the cut there. It's also why I cut up here before we got to the things I have hanging on my wall right there. It just makes it harder to see. It makes it look a little bit cleaner. So just to review the workflow here, we've got this first composition where I did my time remapping as I normally would and as I previously described in my other tutorials. I've got the second composition where not only did I do my visual effects where I overlaid all these gun um, visuals and things like that, laser visuals, but I did the split screen masking. So I duplicated the original composition. I dragged it over at, to the appropriate time and then I put a mask on it to combine the two pieces of footage. So that's what the second intermediate composition is doing. It's doing pretty much all the visual effects, including the split screen. And then this third composition is what I'm considering the final composition. It's where I added camera shake, which again, I explained that in a previous tutorial. And the composition setting size for this is what I want my final video to be. So I'm hoping this final video is gonna be in 4K. So I've got 3840 by 2160 there as compared to the intermediate composition where I just left things full size because I have no reason to crop it. That is the full size of my original images. And so yeah, I just wanted to make this video to share that split screen tip because as I explained, it can be really hard to animate multiple objects at once. And if you can frame your shot in a way that you can take advantage of split screen, it just makes it so much easier. So I hope this helps and stay tuned for more After Effects stop motion tutorials.
and thanks for watching.